stress is good for you. Huh? I've been reading literature lately on the effects of stressors on just about everything. Effects of stress, or lack thereof, on the human body, in pharmacy, in society, just about everywhere. And the common theme seems to be that, in general, there is at least as much good to an application of stress as harm. Really? Medically, I've learned that all the antibiotics we take to reduce the chances of advancing disease leave us weakened. We wind up in a physical comfort zone where we never actually deal with the virus we've been protected against. My grandfather, the family doc, was fond of telling my mother that the more illnesses her son, moi, suffered as a child, the healthier his adulthood would be. And I was a really sick kid till about eight or nine years old. I haven't been in a hospital for an illness since. So here's our society writing laws to protect us against ourselves, defend specific, specific populations, working hard to make everyone feel safe, laws about children's playground equipment, corporal punishment in the family situation, the use of defensive weapons, participation medals so no child, or for that case adult, feels left out, third, fourth, fifth chances for drunk drivers, smoking bans. We can't possibly let us hurt ourselves. And if we do... Some lawyer somewhere will help us find someone or some law responsible for it. It's a participation award for a living. We've created and are actively developing societal antibiotics designed to protect us against all the bad things that could happen to us. The anti-Darwin effect, if you will. And as such, I think we can eventually lose much of the ability to protect ourselves individually and collectively. We are legislating ourselves into one big comfort zone from which we will end up compromised and weakened. And as Nicholas Taleb has said, we are most at risk when we feel the safest. We've just come out of an eight-year comfort zone where a great portion, probably 50% or more, of the population of our country has become quite comfortable that they would live out the rest of their lives protected from harm by rules developed to keep everyone safe and reduce individual responsibility for ensuring that. Antibiotic schools will make sure our kids pass all the tests. Antibiotic medicine will make sure that we all get all the meds we need so we never have to suffer, at least from that disease. And now the stressor is hit. The Donald is our new president. We are witnessing a radical shift away from antibiotic governance and toward individual responsibility. I know my left-leaning friends are scared at the moment, and most of my right-leaning friends are gloating. Perhaps our founding fathers understood this collision more than we by designing a system that would perpetually swing back and forth between an antibiotic Hamiltonian big government model and a self-developed health Jeffersonian more libertarian approach. The pendulum has swung. I know to some of you it appears totally tragic. To others it appears redemption. At the very least, I'm believing it will strengthen the core of the American Democratic Republic experiment and perhaps allow it to live longer. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.